federal government yep. in their effort to try and get get up, if I can use that terminology, uh, plus the unions and Bill Shorten, uh, they've, they've set up a new organisation called the uh, Registered Organisations Commission to uh, look into union activity. And on the... Uh, at the behest of Employment Minister Michaela Cash, they uh, are conducting an investigation into money that the Australian Workers Union gave uh, way back in 2006, a $100,000 $100, donation to uh, get up when, surprise, surprise, Bill Shorten was its uh, National Secretary. So they hope that this uh, raid, and it was, it did get approval from uh, a, a magistrate, uh, it's, um, they hoped that this would, uh, embarrass, uh, Bill Shorten and, you know, make him look, uh, dodgy. But to me, it just looked like it was an operation to get their political enemies, which I don't think is a good look in a democracy. Certainly not. It didn't look good. Not at all. Uh, but it's interesting, the, the hypocrisy of Bill Shorten donating that money, whether by personally or whether it was a, a whole board of the AWU as a collective making that decision. What does Get Up campaign for? A campaign against coal, uh, you know, forestry, for instance, I believe. Now, they're the two biggest industries that the AWU union members uh, partake in. So, it's, it's like Bill Shorten essentially poisoning the waters for his own kind here. It doesn't make sense uh, as, as a, a union boss of, that represents a lot of miners giving $100,000 to a group that actively protests against miners and the working men and women, the blue-collar uh, individuals who, you know, try and make a fair go of it. So it's once again showing Bill Shorten out to be a complete and utter hypocrite. But that's not really the point here. I mean, yes, we can say that, you know, the Australian Workers Union is not making a wise choice on behalf of its members to give money to get up. But the, this is not the question here, whether, you know, it is right of the uh, federal government to, you know, be basically use the power at its disposal to, I mean, they're, they're, they're not questioning the, like, the, that it was, you know, right of this donation to take place, but whether it was properly authorised. And so they're digging up minutes from, you know, meetings 10 years ago. I mean, it, it looks uh, really, you know, desperate. And, you know, I'm, you know, obviously I agree with wh what you're saying, but I'm, you know, being objective here and it's, it's not, it's not a good look. And uh, I, I have to think that, you know, although obviously I disagree with, you know, Labour and the union movement quite a bit, they, they were quite right to, you know, get outraged about it. And in the end, it really backfired on the government because when the raids happened, the, the media were, were there to, to capture it. And so it was widely speculated at the time that the, the media were tipped off so they could, you know, capture, you know, uh, Bill Shorten's humiliation, uh, live, live on TV. And so, uh, Senate Estimates was taking place this week and Employment Minister Michaela Cash was asked whether uh, she or members of her office uh, tipped off the media about the raid and she said that uh, you know, that was not correct, although I should use her exact word. She said she was uh, very offended at, at, at the uh, accusation and it is a very serious allegation. Uh, you know, she, she, she likes to get on a high horse, uh, Michaela Cash. Uh, however, there once a media story appeared that uh, contradicted uh, that and that the media were indeed tipped off. Uh, she came back to Senate Estimates and said that uh, a staffer uh, had tipped off the media who only told her during the uh, the dinner break that, uh, that day and the staffer had since uh, resigned. And so now Michaela Cash has misled Parliament over what looks like a politically motivated raid and it's it's completely blown up in their face and now uh, Michaela Cash, her position looks untenable. Well, I think it is, really. Uh, it it is, it is pretty difficult to get one's head around this, but certainly I think that an action like this could almost cost the government uh, an election if Labor uh, weaponises it well enough. But... Here we look at 
um, you know, uh, people betraying sources, essentially. Uh, it shouldn't be leaked by media that it was a cash, uh, you know, source. Now, that, asks, that makes me ask this question. Is this just a consequence of our moral uh, relativistic culture that, you know, morals like protecting one's sources don't matter anymore? They've just gone to the wayside. Uh, the, the erosion of Judeo-Christian values, the sources have gone to the wayside. Now, the, the only time, probably in the last 10 years, that, that I have seen uh, sources being betrayed, uh, they haven't been on the left-wing side of, you know, the sources and the information that's being, you know, there's no bombshell uh, stuff happening on the left. It's Last time it happened was with Peter Costello uh, meeting with a bunch of age reporters, um, you know, prior to the 2007 election, and there was a big drop. Uh, it doesn't happen with the left because the left media establishment protects their own. So I think that, in a sense, the uh, mainstream media are uh, to blame a little bit here for blowing this up out of proportion uh, to sell papers and whatnot. But also, uh, the Michaela Cash has some ministerial responsibility. Uh, she should be grilled uh, over this, uh, and I think that it is very troublesome. Uh, and our ministers are obviously responsible to the parliament and therefore to the people, uh, and maybe even the governor-general might have to step in here and uh, strip her ministerial post uh, if it's found that, you know, she isn't uh, capable of fulfilling this to uh, an ethical and uh, moral level anymore. I have to disagree with you uh, that it's a breach of journalistic ethic ethics. I don't think that journalists should cover for a politician who has misled Parliament. I don't think that Michaela Cash should feel that, or if she she did know about her stuff, or that that should, you know, that she should feel that she's safe because of, you know, um, journalistic confidentiality that she can then mislead the, the Parliament, because that is a pretty serious uh, offence in the, the Westminster system. You, you don't mislead Parliament. And I would think that a, a journalist Journalist would think that it's even more of a, a greater in, in the public interest to point out when a, po a politician is misleading the parliament rather than respect uh, confidentiality. I mean, it wasn't like uh, they were, you know, respecting a source, you know, revealing some, you know, massive, you know, government conspiracy. I mean, this was a, a tip off about a police raid. You know, it's hardly, uh, it was hardly a, a noble, uh, you know, source. Uh, so, so I really have to, uh, you know, t take umbrage that, you know, somehow journalists, uh, you know, uh, betraying their profession. I think their, their duty to the public to, uh, to make sure that, you know, their politicians aren't lying in Parliament. I think that's of greater concern. Well, I go back, uh, let's go back six or seven months. You, when you're at conferences, for instance, you hear a lot of buzz, a lot of credible buzz. You might even overhear politicians in conversation saying something, right? That maybe a certain leader of a, a certain uh, party might be moving to a, you know, a party that you might belong to, Tim. Now, would you disclose that information if you overheard it, someone having a private conversation, you walking past, uh, or if someone's sitting at a table with you uh, having a conversation and they let something slip, would you disclose that information or would you view that as confidential? Uh, I find this to be a fine line between public interest and journalistic credibility. Uh, it's 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 very noble to think that you know there are these you know standards of on the record, off the record, but I, I definitely am of the view that you know in reality you know there there are really no rules, and you can really you know trust you know nobody in you know uh, politics or media, and so you just have to be extra careful that the person you are you know telling this information to um, you know is going to keep it confidential, or if you are worried about people people overhearing, then you move to a, to a private area. So I definitely, I, I definitely think that you, it's, you know, politicians and media people need to be aware of, you know, where and who they're saying things to. Well, obviously, but for instance, I heard that 
I was at the conference. You were at the conference. I I heard out of a out of Senator Linehelm's mouth when I was sitting next to him uh, outside with Ross Cameron that Mark was moving to the Lib Dems. Now two weeks later, this is page three of the Age. Um, I, I didn't go and blow my blow my horn. I didn't find that necessary. But I guess you could delineate between, you know, that's just a triviality and then obviously misleading the parliament. And I, I think that they're, I guess you could delineate them and say that they are different things. But I certainly do think that there needs to be uh, some respect for a code of ethics and conduct uh, within any profession. And I don't like this dog-eat-dog social Darwinism. I think there needs to be some respect for tradition and some respect for ethics. But I, I still think uh, blaming, you know, journalists for you getting caught out, you know, lying to Parliament, I still think that, you know, regardless of, you know, the ethics of that, you know, Michaela Cash, she has, you know, done, you know, a you know very, you know, wrong thing in our system. She's misled Parliament either because, you know, she, she didn't bother to check with her staff or she's still not being uh, completely honest because I find it very hard to believe that, this stuff, uh, given, given that uh, it was immediately speculated that uh, the media were tipped off, that this stuff it didn't take them, uh, uh, didn't tell Michaela Cash for a whole day that they tipped the media off, and the staff uh, uh, let uh, Michaela Cash deliberately mislead Parliament. Um, being a person of a conservative and of libertarian inclination, I understand that government in a whole generally does things pretty poorly. Uh, so I don't think you, you can attribute to malice what you can attribute to sloppiness or to uh, or, or just plain, you know, idiocy. I think we've certainly learnt that through the Trump administration. Uh, don't attribute to uh, malice what you can attribute to stupidity. I think that people can make mistakes, whether she's made a mistake or not. You know, we can't really know, I guess, until more of the facts come out. But certainly she should have had more oversight of her department. She is not uh, a walker-by. That is her department. Uh, she is responsible for that. So we also need to keep that in mind. And generally when there's a problem, you cut the head off, uh, you cut the, the, the head off the snake. And I think that might have to be done here as well. Certainly, as you said, it does put our... Westminster system into some disrepute. But for me, what is more interesting is, you know, uh, that the left-wing media uh, will not, you know, disclose uh, knowledge of, say, Harvey Weinstein being an alleged rapist for 10 years, but they'll gladly, uh, the New York Times, but then they'll gladly, uh, you know, throw out any conservative or right-wing uh, politician. But certainly I do think that they are, for their tribe, but certainly I think that lying to Parliament is, um, you know, a, a sacrificial sin. And I don't think that she will survive. I mean, uh, I, I predicted that the day after uh, she misled Parliament, that on the Thursday, that she wouldn't last the day she did. Malcolm Turnbull uh, is uh, def uh, defending her. Uh, hopefully, uh, maybe he's thinking that this High Court decision will distract everybody, but I don't think that the Labor Party will uh, let Turnbull uh, get off that easily. And I think it's only a matter of time before, uh, you know, Michaela Cash uh, is forced to resign. I mean, she can't, you know, take the whole moral high ground with unions and, you know, their dishonesty when she has been found to, you know, be dishonest. Yes, well, you, you uh, I can't remember what the, the, the saying is exactly, but you argue with idiots and they'll beat you with experience. And I think that that's what happens when you, you stoop down to someone's level, uh, mudsling, um, get your hands dirty. Uh, the unions know what to do. That, 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 that's their game. That's what they do. And I think that Michaela Cash will either, you know, die a death of a thousand paper cuts or she'll be sacked by the Governor General or deposed by the Prime Minister before you know it. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.